All right. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the Ventures Podcast. Um, this is a follow-up from last week's episode where I really had a conviction to spend more time in 2023 leveraging the Ventures Podcast here to train people in product and code. Um, as I mentioned last week, you know, a lot of people think that they're good at product, meaning all the research and UX design and UI design. Uh, but really, I've worked with some ex- some world experts that are product people that have made me realize that it is an extraordinarily rare it's, it's extraordinarily rare to find somebody who's quite good at it. So we're going to teach product and code, and we're going to basically do it in parallel, where you're going to learn some code as you're learning product. Um, I'm putting together the high level curriculum, and then we're going we're to point to a bunch of free tools. Um, maybe some paid tools uh, for more advanced learning. And uh, so I wanted to revisit this from, from last week. But before we do that, I just <laughs> I had fun over the, over the holiday. Me and my family played around with this um, profile picture.ai. I'll put, a, I'll put a link in the show notes um, yeah, with my little referral link. Uh, it gives me like a free one every five people I refer to. So if you check it out, um, or feel free to not use the referral link. Either way is fine. But anyway, it's fun. You kind of put a few uh, uh, of your uh, photos. You train between 20 and 25 photos. You, you train an AI, and then it pumps out these AI versions of, uh, of, of you. And there were a few uh, fun ones that it did of me that I'll be sort of sharing in the, in the coming weeks. Maybe I'll, I'll change one of my uh, Twitter profile to it or something. Um, or, if you're, or if you're in the ProDeventure Slack uh, I, I posted a couple examples there. If you're not in that, just hit me up. I'd love to, love to have you join our community, especially if you're an, an investor or an entrepreneur. Um, so yeah, again, my email is will at wclittle.com or will at protoventures.com. They both both come to me. Uh, and that's P-R-O-T-A ventures.com. That's the, the group that I, I, I co-founded and I'm a managing director there. And we invest in early stage startups. Okay. So back to this, and last week I kind of ran through it pretty quickly. I want to focus on a couple of things here more specifically. Uh, When you type in domain.com or example.com or google.com or whatever into a web browser, it it first, this little arrow here, and again, if you're just listening to this, uh, you can can click on the link in the show notes to go watch this video because I'm sharing my screen here. Um, but when you when you click when, when you type in domain.com, it, it it first actually goes through a process what's called the domain name system, and I asked Chat GPT here uh, what is D- DNS, and and it, it it appropriately said the domain name system is a system that translates human readable domain names into numerical IP addresses that computers can understand. When you type a website's domain name into a web browser, your computer sends a request to a DNS server to resolve the domain into an IP address. The DNS server then responds with the IP address and your computer uses that information to connect to the web server hosting the website. So basically it translates domain.com into an IP address, which is then used to route your request into a web server. And then in this screen here that I'm showing, is, is, is a more zoomed in from the operating system level to the programming languages, what happens when it hits the web server. So following this example, the actual program on a web server that hosts my Ruby on Rails code, and we'll talk a lot more this year about what that means, is called Puma. Puma wraps up my Rails code and is ready to serve HTML, CSS, and JavaScript back to the web browser, which then makes it look all pretty and has all the you know, interfaces and interaction and different things. Um, now, there's an important component to this. So last week I talked about kind of how it goes through the routes and controller and the model can pull from databases or any other third-party sources. Um, and it has this sort of fancy way of constructing the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to then send back to the domain. There are, there are multiple ways that it can translate this HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to the web browser. There's one uh, route that's called a, sort of a RESTful. It's a, it's a standard HTTP request. 
um, that that is that that goes through what we just talked about here in terms of uh, domain, and then it hits a server, and then it goes back. But there's another version called a WebSocket, and a WebSocket essentially allows a real-time stream of this HTML, CSS, JavaScript to a web browser, and that's how you think get things like live chat. When you if you've ever been on a website where something pops up automatically. You know, we're very used to that now with our apps and such, but uh, typically that's, that's sent through a WebSocket. And Ruby on Rails is a web development framework that makes it extremely easy, well, relatively easy, to build with WebSockets because this Hotwire stack, or HTML over the wire, Hotwire uh, stack, sets up socket connections and allows you to move data uh, to and from uh, the, the web server from a web client in a, a very efficient way. It's very slick. All modern apps need to have this. And so this is why I'm, I'm now doubling down on the Hotwire stack uh, for founders that are building new technology companies, especially when they need to crank out their minimum viable products. Because I, my thesis, my overall thesis, is that it's better to learn web development stack like Ruby on Rails in conjunction with the AI, our AI overlords, ChatGPT, GPT-4 is coming out. I think that it's going to become extreme. Like in addition to all of us having our AI profile pictures, you're going to be able to quickly get a logo, quickly get a bunch of templates, UI components, and then use those components to put together a quick web application. Yes, I think essentially low-code, no-code tools will get better and better, but also the web development from the other angle, the web development tools will get better and better. And so you're going to have to essentially have low code, low code, low code, no code meet the build from scratch web development frameworks like Ruby on Rails, and it's going to become faster and faster and more elegant to uh, to, to build your own web applications. And so anyway, being able to teach product and web uh, development is a key key thesis, uh, a key th key project that I'm going to be working on here in 2023. So I'd love to hear from you. If you are interested in going on this journey, again, my email address is will at wclittle.com. I'll put that in the show notes as well. And I will very much look forward to having you. I'm going to probably put together a relatively small cohort of people, those that kind of meet the, the qualifications for what we're looking for here. And again, we're going to learn both Web 3 and Web 2. Kind of the new, the new web development, it has to incorporate different aspects of blockchains and tokens and you know NFTs and such. So... I think that this is just the modern web. The new, the new way of building on the web has to incorporate all of this. So have a great rest of your year. I'll see you on the flip side. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Again, you can visit wclittle.com if you've been listening to this to see the, the video of it. And, um, and if you've been watching the video, of course, at any time, you can, watch the, you can listen to these podcasts anywhere that you get your podcasts. You can just search for ventures and it should show up. All right. Thanks a lot. Cheers, y'all. All right. A couple quick things before you go. Number one, I have a general newsletter where I write about technology and startups and health science and teaching people to code. And I write about a variety of different subjects that we talk about on this show. So if you go to wclittle.com, there you'll be able to subscribe and you'll also be able to subscribe to particular topics. If you're just interested in one or a few of them, you'll be notified right when I publish new content in those areas. Number two, my partners and I at Proto Ventures have a portfolio company called Startup Rocket. If you go to startuprocket.com, there you'll be able to receive coaching guides and customize an operations framework for you and your team and your advisors to be on the same page in terms of what is the appropriate next step for you and your entrepreneurial journey. And finally, if you wouldn't mind leaving a review anywhere that you have listened to this podcast or watched this podcast, it'd be super helpful to help those who might be interested in consuming this content as well. Thank you.